This is the second video in topic 8 on how do glasses work. In this video we're going to be looking at the nature of light. So we're going to start by considering what light actually is. In the street lights topic we saw that the photoelectric effect provided evidence that light was actually made up of little particles. So this is the quantum mechanical view. Light is made up of particles. The other view is that light is a wave travelling through space. Now both views are actually correct, but for this topic we're going to be considering light as a wave. But first of all, let's just have a quick look at Joe explaining some other evidence that light is actually a particle. Newton believed that light was particles. Let's see why. In light, my hand casts a shadow. That's also what we'd expect of particles. So light shares that property with particles. Do waves cast a shadow? Well, it depends on the wavelength. At 10 kilohertz, the wavelength of sound is about 34 millimetres. The book is six times wider than the wavelength. The signal is weaker where we would expect a sound shadow. There are also interesting variations near the edges We'll return to these when we discuss diffraction. At 340 hertz, the wavelength is one meter and it diffracts around the object. No strong shadow at all. Conclusion. We only see shadows when the wavelength is rather smaller than the object. Once the wavelength is longer than the object, it just diffracts around it. So diffraction depends on wavelength. So light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. As we saw in the speed camera topic, the electromagnetic spectrum consists of things such as radio waves, gamma waves and visible light. Visible light tends to have wavelengths between about 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers and it actually consists of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. Let's have a look at Joe explaining now how light fits into the electromagnetic spectrum. The spectrum of visible light covers wavelengths from about 400 to 700 nanometers, all those wavelengths less than a millionth of a meter. The speed of light is large, so the frequencies of visible light are too high to measure directly. We now know that light is electromagnetic radiation with this range of wavelengths. Visible light covers only about one octave in the huge electromagnetic spectrum. Beyond violet, waves with shorter wavelengths are called ultraviolet. We can't see ultraviolet, but it can cause our skin to tan or to burn. Beyond ultraviolet lie X-rays and gamma rays, which are increasingly more dangerous than ultraviolet. Wavelengths longer than those of red light are infrared. We can feel these as warmth on our skin. And our warm skin emits infrared too. Very hot objects emit radiation in the visible as well as in the infrared. At successively longer wavelengths, we find microwaves and a huge spectrum of radio waves. One very special thing about light is that it always travels through a vacuum at a constant speed. This speed is known as the speed of light and it's equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So it's a very fast speed. It was realized by Einstein in his special theory of relativity that the speed of light was the same in every reference frame. So this is actually one of the postulates that special relativity is based upon. It's only based upon two postulates and that's one of them. Maxwell also realized in his equations of electromagnetism that the speed of light is constant. So if we have the right equipment, we can actually measure the speed of light in the laboratory. So let's have a look at Joe doing this measurement now. When James Clark Maxwell discovered that the speed of electromagnetic waves was similar to that measured for light, he proposed that light was an electromagnetic wave. So, let's measure the speeds. In this experiment, light from a laser enters from the left and is reflected towards us by the first mirror. It then passes through a piece of glass acting as a 
beam splitter. Some of the light comes straight towards us and strikes this detector. The rest of the light is reflected across to this mirror, back again, and then via another mirror to the second detector. The laser light looks continuous, but actually this laser emits millions of extremely short pulses every second. By the way, very short laser pulses are also used in fibre optics to transmit signals very rapidly. Here, the light pulses are received by the detectors and shown on the oscilloscope. The light travelling via the second path arrives later, of course. When I move the mirror by 10 centimetres, the second round-trip path is decreased by 20 centimetres. This reduces the delay by 0.65 nanoseconds. Dividing distance by time gives the speed of light in air 30 centimetres per nanosecond. So you've just seen that light is both a wave and a particle. We've seen that it forms part of the electromagnetic spectrum and that it travels at the speed of light. Next we're going to consider reflections.